I'm Brian Leary of Light Source Journeys, and together with Zeiss Lenses, I've come down to Mexico City. This is a place that's steeped in art, in culture, in history. This time, we've come down to play with time itself. We're going to be playing with time lapses in this series. And by the end of it, you're going to know everything that you need to be able to create your own professional looking time lapse. Let's start right off with the gear that you're going to need, starting with cameras. Most cameras these days have what's known as an intervalometer or an interval meter where it can take a picture in a specified amount of time so you don't have to sit there pushing it over and over. You want to be careful though because we're shooting time lapses and you'll often see a setting that says time lapse. What we're going to be talking about is assembling still photos into a final video. The time lapse setting in your camera is actually going to take all of the pictures in the camera and make a little video and put it right to your memory card. What we're actually dealing with here is taking still pictures and we're going to assemble them later. So depending on your camera, you may have an ability to set it up for a time lapse itself or the still pictures, or in this one, you can tell it you want both. I'm going to just set it up though to take those still images. If your camera doesn't have that built in, or even if it does, there's other options too you can choose. There's aftermarket remotes you can buy that will control that same thing. This one has a computer control and an LCD screen on it, and that's going to allow me to type in the interval, along with how many pictures up to 999 that I want it to take. I personally, even though I have it built into all of my cameras, use a controller device by a company called Dynamic Perceptions. These actually are the same guys that make the rails and the motion control that I use. So this will control not only my camera and the camera shutter, but it can also control all of the motion when I start incorporating that to it. Next is probably one of the most important pieces that you have to think of, and that's going to be the lens choice. When you're dealing with lenses, not only do you have to worry about sharpness or color or the normal things you'd deal with in a still picture, but now there's a few other things to consider. Do you really want an autofocus or a manual focus lens when we're talking about this? If you have autofocus, you have to make sure to disengage your focus after you've confirmed it, or else shot to shot it might change, and consistency is key when it comes to a time lapse. I personally use manual focus lenses when it comes to this. Now, a lot of times I'm using a Sony system, so I use the Loxia line on there, and these are gonna be entirely manual focus. I can actually dial in right on here how I want the focus to line. So if I am shooting, let's say, at f22, I can take my infinity and put it right over 22, and it shows me now that with this little bracket between the 22s from between three to four feet, or about a meter, to infinity is in perfect focus. I never have to second guess that. If I'm shooting my Nikon series or let's say a Canon, uh, Zeiss also makes a line called the Milvis line that'll work for that, or the Otis line, depending on the quality level you're looking for. Now, one of the major things I like about this series, whether it be for my Sony or for my Nikon, is A, the apertures don't move. That means that between shot to shot, you have consistency. With most other types of lenses, when you're shooting a time lapse, there's a slight variance in how that opening in the lens occurs. If you have that from shot to shot, you're gonna see a flicker in your final time lapse, and it's not a very appealing look. It's a huge benefit to have that consistent aperture to make a very professional overall look. Another huge advantage to these are the lens coatings. Lens coating is going to help minimize glare and flare, so when I'm pointing this right into the sun or in a dynamic scene, I really don't have to worry too much about any kind of distortion coming off of there to ruin this. Now, the coatings are really going to help a lot to keep glare and flare compressed, but if you don't have a clean lens, any little bit of dust or hair is going to show up, especially if you've got that dynamic scene. And don't forget, not only the front optic, but the rear optic on here. This is actually going to show up even more than it would on the front optic if you had dust. So make sure to cover both sides. Well, I mean, the lenses, the bodies, those guys are very important, but you need to make sure that this is all taken from the exact same location. So a good tripod is going to be a necessity also. I use a carbon tripod, which can help with vibration dampening. They're very light, so if I'm going to be backpacking at all, no problem, I can take it with me. If you're only using it, let's say, at the end of the parking lot, you don't need to worry about these nice lightweight tripods. You can pick up something just used at the local camera store and that's sufficient. Good rule of thumb for your tripods. If your camera gear weighs, let's say, two pounds or about a kilo, you want to double that weight for the tripod, so you want maybe like a two kilo or a four pound rating for your tripod. I'm almost ready to head out, but before I do so, I want to make sure that my sensor's clean. Nothing is worse than spending all of the time to film a time lapse, and then you see a spot of dust. You can take that out in a still picture pretty easily, but if you're doing it in 
many pictures, hundreds if not thousands of them, it's not going to match up properly and you'll definitely see something you don't want in your final time lapse. Now that we've talked about the gear, I'm going to go pack up my stuff and take a short road trip a couple hours outside of Mexico City to a place called Valle de Bravo. That's going to give us a chance to talk about the camera settings that you need to take a good professional looking time lapse and also get to shoot some time lapses in an incredible place that most people don't think of when they think of Mexico.